It's the biggest party in Portland and is going on right now at Memorial Coliseum. The fourth Mayor's Ball is showcasing local talent and raising money for a worthy cause. And along with hundreds and hundreds of other people, our David Gillen is standing by at the Coliseum. I understand there's quite a crowd there, David. Yeah, surely it's as big as it can be, I guess. The Coliseum is sold out. Some 11,000 people are here. It's kind of loud inside. That's why we're out here on the concourse. You know, not only is the crowd large uh, for this Mayor's Ball, so is the variety of music. to blues to country to swing. It's here at the Mayor's Ball. 54 bands are performing tonight, making this the largest Mayor's Ball ever. There are six separate stages set up at the Coliseum and two more at the nearby convention hall, which has been set aside for alternative music, such as the kind played by this band, whose name we can't even say on TV. Plastic utensil. <laughs> Ham. Well, it's really performance art, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I hate to be categorized as art, but we're, our roots are rock, our roots are blues, our psychedelic rock from the 60s. Uh. The Mayor's Ball is more than just a party and more than just a fundraiser. It's proof Portland boasts a dynamic and vibrant local music scene. Boy, music for everyone's taste tonight at the Memorial Coliseum. Thank you, David Gillen reporting. Lowering it a few decibels, lovers of <laughs> ballet watched Andre Ustinov. For the first time ever, Portland's Mayor's Ball sold out tonight. Reporter Bob Hyde joins us live from Memorial Coliseum where thousands of people are still enjoying the music, Bob. Jeff, 11,000 people around that to be exact. It is by far the biggest year for the Mayor's Ball and one of the best times for the crowd, the performers, and the organizers. The crowd gathered early in front of the Coliseum. Many wore their best party clothes and party hairstyles. Inside the Coliseum, it was rock and roll and jazz. Aluminum ham. Then there was Smegma and other bands in the convention center for those with a taste for the avant-garde. The reasons for showing up at the Mayor's Ball seemed to be as varied as the music itself. Charity, how about the music? Music's great. How about you? What brought you out tonight? I came with him. <laughs> oh, I thought it'd be a lot of fun. I've never been to a large dance like this before. While the people enjoyed themselves on the dance floor, the performers and organizers were more than pleased with the event's sellout success. I'm just really happy that it's raising money for a good cause, which is loaves and fishes. It's happening. Mayor Bud Clark originally started the ball as a fundraiser to pay off his election campaign debt four years ago. They just told me that we're sold out. After speaking to the thousands gathered in the Coliseum, the mayor said he's surprised at the success of what is now a local charity and musical milestone. But it just shows that there's a, a big energy in the city of Portland of people wanting to uh, participate and uh, have fun together. And it's uh, respect for each other. Once again, what does it mean to Portland? It means putting Portland on the map and citizens having uh, a civic pride in themselves about their city and about their music and about themselves. That's one of the biggest things about this ball is getting everybody together. By the way, about $25,000 probably raised this evening through this sellout here at the Mayor's Ball tonight. Jeff? Okay, Bob, I know there's a lot of bands down there tonight. Did you have a favorite? Uh, actually, the Dan Reed Network coming up after uh, uh, Curtis Salgado, I believe, is playing in the background right now. But uh, Dan Reed Network by far is the best. Okay, thank you, Bob. My choice, at least. I know. You told me earlier you like Smegma, so I was just checking in with you a little <laughs> well, bit. Well, I'm, I'm taking off now. I'm off duty. Okay, take care, Bob. Right, bye -bye. We'll be bringing you more music from the Mayor's Ball later in the show, but next on Channel 2 News, the bottom line forces Jimmy Swagger to break from the assemblies of God Church and the pilot of a high...